Okay, welcome sailors. We're here at Selden um, and we're here for the Friday Forum. Uh, we're going to be looking at how masts are made from scratch, right from a bit of metal all the way through to the, the final thing that you might have on all the RS sailing boats. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video and if you've got any questions at the end, feel free to put comments below. So we've got Steve here. Steve, what's your role right. within Selden? Uh, I'm the managing director of Selden UK, so I look after the factory that pretty much produces all of the spars for RS. Fantastic. Right, so we're going to get straight into it. Um, so first things first is what? We're coming with a lump of metal. Um, so let's 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 we're going to focus on tapered masts to start off with. So what is a tapered mast? Okay, so a tapered mast is a mast which is narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. And the reason the sailor wants that is because that means that the top of the mast will be more flexible and when a gust hits the boat, it means that the top of the mast will bend away and depower the rig. So for the performance sailor, most performance boats like 200s and uh, 400s and 500s will have a tapered aluminium rig. Okay, and then as opposed to say the Fever or the Cuba, they've just got a non-tapered... Sure, they've got non-tapered masts. Um, a uh, non-tapered mast is much easier for us to produce and as you'll see in a minute there's a very complicated engineering process of how we put that taper into an RS400 mast for example. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so we've got two different types, tapered and non-tapered. So how does that vary? If we take down a tapered mast, we'll go down the, the, the process of how that's made. How does that vary from the very beginning stages from a non-tapered? Sure. So from the very beginning, um, almost all aluminium that's made in the extrusion plant uh, leaves that plant having been heat treated uh, to bring it up to its full strength and also anodized so it has corrosion resistance. The problem with material which has been heat treated is that if you then want to rework it, um, the heat that you put into it would then make it soft again. Right. So we have to buy in material for tapering which hasn't been heat treated and hasn't been anodized. It's what's called in the industry as mill state aluminium extrusion. Right, okay, so heat treating stiffens up the material. So yes, it, goes it from does. A, quite a, uh, a, malleable, a malleable, more flexible material um, up to something which is fully stiffened, but also hardened. Um, so if you were to put a, a mast in a boat that hadn't been heat treated, as soon as you put on the retention, the whole thing would just collapse. Whereas once it's been brought up to its full specification of heat treatment, uh, that mast will be hard and will last you for many years. Okay, so we, we've got our mast, which is effectively uh, not treated whatever, mm -hmm. it's a mill state. Mill state, yep. And then where do we go from there? Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is start the tapering process. And we do that with uh, this machine behind us, which is a CNC controlled plasma cutter. Okay, well let's go and have a look at that then. Okay, so we're here at the plasma cutter. Yep, that's okay. right. So what, what goes on here then, Steve? Okay, so basically what's happened is that we've taken our mill state piece of aluminium tube, uh, laid it into the machine, and this cutting head uh, cuts out the V. And as you can see, this is the piece of material that was cut out of this section. Uh, the tube rotates, uh, the cutting head moves backwards and forwards, and that cuts this parabolic piece of section out of the middle of the tube. As you can see, in this state, in mill state, the material is very soft and flexible and uh, really has very little strength to it. So, why would you use some uh, piece of equipment like this for laser cutting? Is it important to the we level. feel it's really important. Um, accuracy and speed. Um, in the old days, and some of our competitors still cut things by hand, and uh, you know that means that they can be inconsistent, and it also takes a long time to do it because of the volume that we need to do, and because the taper makes a difference to the performance of the mast. We're trying to do this as quickly as we can, but also repeatability is really important. We want to ensure that. If a 200 sailor buys a mast tomorrow, um, it's as close as we can possibly make it to the mast that we were selling to the 200 sailors three, four, five, ten years ago. Fantastic. Right, okay, so we've got this, this uh, section cut out. 
where do we go for the next step? Okay, so we cut the slot out of the front, and then we need to move over to the press, uh, where we can start making the tape. Okay, let's do that. If we're here, I presume, at the press, mm -hmm. yep. what happens here then? Um, so here the section is loaded into the press. Uh, these are press tools, and there's a different set of tools for every section that we do. The section is loaded in, the press comes down, and it squeezes the V that we saw being cut out uh, a little while ago. It squeezes that together and rolls the tube over uh, to form it back into a round section. And so it does that three times, is that right? Yeah, we have to do it three times. It's, um, it's not a squashing action. Right. If we just squashed it, you'd just end up with a mask that looked like a pancake. Yeah. We, have to, we have to roll it over. And we have to have special tooling because it's quite easy um, to close the track while we're squeezing. So we have special tools that keep the track dimension the same while the back of the section is rolled round the track. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're at the welding process here. Okay, so I presume this is the point where we're going to tidy it up and join the whole thing together. So, how does that work? Okay, yep, you're dead right. This is where we make it back into the tube again. And uh, so we lay the tube uh, into the machine. Uh, the tube gets clamped up um, so that the weld is uh, nicely joined together. Um, and then a welding head moves along and welds the V back up again. The machine is semi-automated. Um, one of the things which is really important is that we weld the tube when it's perfectly straight. So the machine is all laser aligned uh, to make sure that that top mast is absolutely dead straight and the weld is dead straight. Okay, so that process is then finished. We've got a nice weld all the way down the mast. Where do we go next? Well, we've now got a tapered tube, but we still haven't got a heat-treated tube. Right. So now we need to break that, that, that material right up to the full specification of harness. Okay, so off to the, the oven. oven. Let's go. Okay, so we're at the oven now. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens? What happens is, well, during the day, uh, tubes are cut and tapered, welded, mm -hmm. and they're laid into this trolley. Uh, so we're at the beginning of the day, so it's a bit empty, but by the end of the day, this will be nice and full. Um, and then at the end of the day the doors get closed and there's an overnight cook cycle. So the cook cycle is about 10 hours and uh, goes to about just over 200 degrees. And by heat treating the aluminium, it brings it up to its full uh, treated specification. Okay, so it's purely just heated up. There's no other sort of chemicals or no, gases No, it is involved. purely a heating process. Um, we have to use different heat processes for different materials, different types of aluminium, like a different heat treat, and uh, we're very accurate in the way that we do it. Uh, there are sensors that go onto the tube so that we make sure that every tube in the oven has reached its full heat treated um, effect. Yeah, okay. Brilliant. Okay, so you, overnight it's been cooking up. Next morning, uh, we're looking to then clean up the... Yep, that's the right. The next morning, the oven's opened and uh, the tubes then go into a cleaning process. Okay, so let's go and check that out. Okay, so we're at the cleaning process. So this is the kind of shape that will come out of the oven, is that right? Exactly right. So you can see it's quite a shiny, um, shiny finish to it. And what we're hoping to achieve is... is something like this that's correct so how do we achieve that then well we use this machine here this is a bead peeler and it's like a shot blaster so the uh, extrusion the mask travels down the wheels yeah. goes through what we call the blast cabinet and in there we fire uh, glass balls at the surface of the metal uh, that give it this nice even matte effect um, the other thing that that it does is it hardens the surface as we impact the aluminium it just hardens the surface a bit and that just gives the surface a little bit more resistance to scratching um, a little bit more um, resistance to, to marking and um, when the tube goes to the next process which is anodizing it makes the anodizing grip better to the surface of the mask okay so that's where we go next then, so the, the mast is then going up to be anodised, yep. is so that the done next, internally? Or no, we use an outside contractor for anodising. Yeah. Anodising is a, uh, you know, it's a, a chemical process, um, it's uh, electrolysis. 
and uh, so it's something that uh, we'd rather leave it to an outside contractor. Okay. Um, and then, so just out of interest, if you've got different coloured masts, so for example, some of the RS boats are, have got black spars. That's correct. So where is that black colour coming from? Is that that coming? is coming on aluminium. Uh, that is coming from the anodising. Right. Um, so the anodising can either be black um, yeah. or it can be clear. Yeah. Uh, not silver, actually, you know, when the masks come back and they look like they're silver, that's had a clear anodisation. Right, okay. So they've been anodised, they then come back to here. And then they're into CNC. CNC, okay. Okay, so we're here in front of the CNC machine. Quite a yep. posh bit of kit. We like it. It's pretty new, isn't it? It's a good toy, yeah. It's about 10 months old. Right. And it was, a, it was just over £200,000 investment. Wow, yeah. So I, I presume you're... Uh, speeding up the process massively to, to make that investment. Yes, we are. Um, it's very, very efficient um, and it's also very accurate. Um, so, you know, one of the benefits for us is that it's a lot faster. Uh, one of the benefits for the sailor is that all the fittings are guaranteed to be in the right place. And things like, um, you know, T-terminal alignment. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, by hand, maybe you'd get the, uh, the shrouds where they connect to the mast accurate to within a millimetre, yeah. with this we will put one of them on the right. So we are a lot more extra than we were by doing that then. Yeah. Okay, so we're at the final so fitting out yep. section here. So we've got a um, section of um, so vision masks. That's right, um, batch of five. Yeah, ready to go. Um, and then, um, what's the process there? Okay, so the process is that uh, basically the um, masks arrive to the assembly floor from the CNC machine and then from our stores department arrives a kit of parts. Every mask we make is made to a bill of materials which lists all of the parts that are required and where they should go on the spa. So the assembler takes his kit which will have things like the boom bracket and the bill of materials will tell him uh, which holes to fit that boom bracket to. Obviously this has been made a lot easier by the CNC machine yeah. because the holes for the green bracket are already pre-drilled. Yeah. Okay, so then we fit out all the masks, we make sure that it's all got the right parts in because we've got the, the, the kit specific to the amount of masks and the type of mask you've got. Um, uh, and then where do we go from here? Some of your, some of your masks are, are roped out? Yep, that's right. So uh, for RS, um, almost all of the masks are pre rigged and so while the stores have put together this kit of parts, our rigging department will have put together the kits of the rigging. And all of the rigging will be attached to the mast, uh, all the ropes will be run through, uh, then it will be wrapped up in plastic, the yeah. spread is attached to the outside, and then it's ready to go. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much Steve. Appreciate no it. So what we've done is we've had a really, really brief introduction to, to your process. Obviously sure. it takes a lot longer and um, so I really appreciate that. So just to recap, the, uh, the masks come in in their raw format, mm -hmm. um, then they're going to go through and be cut and be tapered, then uh, pressed, then welded, uh, then they go to be uh, heat treated, mm -hmm. cleaned up, off to be anodized, back, all the holes cut with the CNC right. machine, and then fitted out here. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, you know, if you ever get an opportunity to come down here, it's a very organized process, and, you know, you can see you're, you're working with quite large quantities of, of masks. I mean, how many masks would you expect to fit that through in a year? Or we're doing we're doing about eight to ten thousand masks a year, wow. uh, if you include booms and spinnaker holes and everything else that we do. And so this is sort of like a, the beginning of the RS delivery uh, for next month. Um, what generally we do for RS is we have one big delivery a month, and as you can see, this is a spillage. Uh, RS quests at the bottom, uh, RS fevers at the top, and that's pretty much just the start of the uh, of the delivery that we're compiling together. Cool. Um, so as a company, you're dealing with the Terra all the way up through. I've seen some quite quite a lot bigger kits. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the things that's fascinating about running this business is the different types and scales of masks that we do. RS Terra, probably about the simplest thing that we do. And uh, over here behind us we have uh, a Swan 54. Um, it's uh, 32 metres long. It's got a special white paint on it. Uh, 
and uh, you know the boat that that's going on is uh, well into the millions of pounds. Yeah. So it's a different, it's a different story for another time, but the holes on there, that's not obviously going for a CNC issue. No, no, we're certainly looking at doing that. Uh, that's the next step for us. And, uh, and of course, also we do these masts in carbon as well. Yeah. Uh, this boat has an aluminium mast with a carbon fibre boom. And next time you're back, you're welcome to look at the carbon mast. Yeah, so I think leading into that, uh, next next Selden visit, which we'll, we'll do in a few months' time, we're going to run through how carbon masts are, are made. If you've got any questions whatsoever, give us a shout. Um, just message us at the bottom of this and just send us a comment. Once again, thanks a lot to Selden, thanks a lot to Steve. Um, if you've got any questions, you can obviously ask on the, on the, the comments below. And feel free to, um, we're gonna, in the comments below, we're gonna tag in Selden with their various social media streams. So feel free to give them a shout. But apart from that, that's obviously Friday Forum. Any questions, give us a shower. It's very noisy. All right. Okay, so hopefully you found that interesting. Um, once again, comments below. We'll get back to you. Selden have said that they'll ask some of the questions that you've, uh, that you've got. So just give us a shout. Same old thing. Uh, we are posting these videos on um, RS Sailing, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, so get involved in those. Um, next step, we're going to be looking at um, carbon masks next time we come back to Selden, which will be in a few months' time. So think about any questions you might have to do with that. Um, keep an eye on Facebook and all the social media to find out where we're going to be next, because uh, the next one should be a good one. Okay, so thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.